The Summer Institute on Medical Ignorance, or SIMI as we like to call it, our Science Education Partnership Award, or SEPA. Student participation is in a seven-week intensive research experience in laboratories learning techniques varying from molecular biology to clinical research to radiology imaging to artificial hearts. Of the 453 total participants so far, 13% or 58 have been Native Americans, largely centering from tribes around Arizona and Tucson, with the majority from the Tohono O'odham and the Navajo Nation. However, we have also had students who are Hopi, San Carlos, or White River Apache. At the end of the summer program, the students deliver a final report based in the ignorance mode where they tell us more about the questions they have in their projects than the real answers. This gives them a nice opportunity to interact with their colleagues, present to their mentors and fellow lab mates about their program and what they were able to accomplish in the summer. For many students, this is an experience that really changes the outlook for the rest of their life. All right. Hi, my name is Megan Lopez, and I worked at the Marshall Foundation Artificial Heart Department last year. And uh, the question I started out with at the start of the last summer was, how does the cardio with total artificial heart affect kidney function? Last summer, um, I decided to do a case study on a patient who was implanted with the lion heart. I followed him from admission through discharge. Lion heart, it is an LVAT, which means a, which stands for left ventricular assist device, and what that means is it assists only the left side of the heart. The questions I had was, how does hypertrophy affect cardiac output? What is the future hold for lion heart here at the UMC? Is there other data that needs to be included on the inclusion protocol? And how will this device compare to other devices? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Rochelle Thomas. I worked in the cardiovascular and thoracic surgery lab this summer with Dr. Paul McDonough back there. And my title for my project this summer was in vitro gluco glucose incubation to stimulate the diabetic condition and neutrophil CD11B activation with whole blood. First of all, to start off, diabetes by definition is a polygenic disease characterized by abnormally high glucose levels in the blood. This summer I just researched three um, basic types of diabetes. That's type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Hello everybody, I'm Tiara Maho and I worked in Dr. Murray Brilliant's lab in molecular genetics. Um, the program that I was assigned over the summer dealt with the genomic tiger rattlesnake DNA and what was really interesting about it is that nobody's ever studied this particular rattlesnake and um, the gene. So. Um, Basically, the main question that I had starting this project was what gene controls pigmentation and causes different coloration? We want to know if it's due to their environment that they live in or if it's um, inherited. So. Okay, uh, the melanocortin 1 receptor, we know functions in making two types of melanin, eumelanin um, and pheomelanin. Eumelanin is responsible for the brownish um, brown and black color, and the fail melanin is responsible for the red and yellow. Okay, so my ending questions were what does the sequence of the MC1R gene determine, and what causes the difference in color of the tiger rattlesnake? There are many wonderful stories from the students in our program. Here are two examples. Nanaba Garrison received a PhD in genetics from Stanford in 2009 and she's currently a postdoc there in a special new program in ethics and genetics. Her research in genetics, and particularly on albinism, began when she was a semi high school student researcher. She worked with Drs. Murray Brilliant, Robert Erickson, and Marley Switty. She continued on as an NIH Mark Scholar at the University of Arizona, and this led to a research year at the Pasteur Institute in Paris, during which she gave a Navajo name to an albinism gene she had discovered. This work was featured in Science Magazine in 2003. Nanaba is particularly interested in ethical issues related to genetics research and the Native American populations.
Sylvester Sammy Moses began his high school research in Simi in the area of pharmacological control of pain. After college, he continued by studying animal models of radiation-induced lymphedema, and he then entered the Molecular and Cellular Biology graduate program at the University of Arizona. He has received his master's degree and expects to complete the Ph.D. degree in December of 2010. Sammy has received several awards and special fellowships, and he recently published a first authored paper in the high-impact journal Cancer Research on molecular targeting and cancer therapeutics. He plans to apply to medical school next year, where he looks forward to a career in translational science, discovering new classes of drugs to treat cancer. For more information, visit us at medicalignorance.org.